Hello and welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we're going to be talking about building your own PC versus buying a commercial pre-built PC. Why somebody might choose one or the other and what the positives and negatives are of each choice. And as often happens with these videos, uh, the reason this topic came up is because of something that happened in my personal life. I have a buddy of mine that last year, he was asking me about computer stuff because he had an old gaming PC and it just wasn't meeting his needs anymore. And so he wanted to know a little bit about CPUs and graphics cards and things like that because he was going to upgrade his PC. Well, what he ended up doing was he ended up going out, I think it was to Best Buy, not entirely sure, and buying an HP Omen 25L pre-built gaming PC. Now, we spent a fair bit of money for this. He wouldn't tell me exactly how much, but I've looked at similar ones that are for sale now, and they're about $1,700 Canadian. Now, regardless, whatever he paid for it, uh, he got a Ryzen 5 5600G processor, he got an RTX 3070 graphics card, and he got 16 gigabytes of RAM. And so you're probably thinking, well, that's a really good mid-range gaming PC, and you're right, it is. But what happened was, he called me up shortly after he got it, and he said, hey, you know, this thing is super duper loud, and when I touch the case, it's, it's hot to the touch, like the sides of the case are just smoking hot. And he says, I can barely hear myself think over the sound of this computer. I said, well, it sounds like it's overheating. Have you, you taken a look at it? And he said, well, I'm going to take it back to the people that I got it from and sort of see what's going on there. So we did. He ended up going back. And what he was told was that, well, you know, if you're finding that it, it's super hot like that, they said, do you have any pets? And he said, no. And they said, oh, just take the sides off the case. It'll be fine. So he's been running this gaming PC for the last year with no case sides on just to, to keep the thing cool. So his latest issue, he, he called me up and he says, Hey, look, Graham, this thing, you know, my games are running really slow and I can't figure out why they shouldn't be running slow on this computer. And so in talking to him, it turned out that the way the computer was set up, it had a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive and a one terabyte Western Digital physical hard drive, 7200 RPM. So because his NVMe drive is so small, it only has the operating system on it, not much room for anything else. So all of his games and all of his data are on this 7200 RPM hard disk drive. Uh, so I told him, I said, if you're having problems with slowness, the first place I'd look is that hard drive because everything else in your, your PC is pretty good. So he said, why don't you come over to my house and take a look at it and see for yourself and maybe we can figure out what's going on. So it was interesting to me because I don't generally buy pre-built PCs. I have a few in the house, but they're all just office PCs. They're nothing that I use for anything serious. They're not for gaming or content creation or anything like that. So I was kind of curious to go and see, you know, what does a modern pre-built gaming PC looks like? Um, kind of wanted to know. So, so I agreed to go over there and take a look. And keep in mind, as far as I can tell, this computer last year probably cost about $1,700 Canadian, give or take. And so here's what I found. And... I'm not kind of pointing these things out to kind of be mean about pre-builts or about HP, Omen, or, or anything else. I just found it sort of interesting the way a pre-built PC is put together versus something you'd build custom for yourself. So the first thing I noticed was that this Omen PC was in a really small case. Uh, not just a micro ATX case, but a small micro ATX case. In particular, the width that was only about six and a half inches wide, which means you can't get much of a CPU cooler in there. So what HP had done, they had their own little custom um, cooler. It was a thin aluminum, thinned aluminum piece with a downward blowing fan, a small one on top. It wasn't even an original AMD Stealth. Uh, it looked like it had significantly less capacity than a Stealth. Um... So it was this tiny little CPU cooler on there. The only fan that the case had looked like a 92 millimeter exhaust fan in the back. There was no intake fan, uh, no top fan, no bottom fan. So just this one little 92 millimeter fan in this tiny, tiny case. The case is so small that RTX 3070 graphics card went from the back of the case almost right through to the front of the case. Now beyond that, the front of the case is pretty much just solid metal. There's no, no venting holes, no place that I could see with, with a fan mounted. Uh, um, and there were drive bays mounted to the front as well. So with the two drives he had in there, there was really no airflow that could come in from the front of the case. Now, I think there was some mesh on the bottom, some mesh on the top. But with that one 92 millimeter exhaust fan trying to cool a Ryzen 5 5600G processor and that RTX 3070 graphics card, man, it, it's just not keeping up. So it kind of made sense why the thing was running hot on him. Uh, I could totally understand that. 
Um, the other thing I found interesting was the way the motherboard was put together. Because if you buy a motherboard from like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, whoever, you kind of know what you're going to get, right? A micro ATX board, an ATX board, they're all pretty similar. They might have differences in the number of M.2 slots or the number of memory slots, but you kind of know what you're getting, right? But this was unusual for how little connectivity it had. For instance, now this is the uh, HP HANA motherboard. Um, first of all, there's only two PCIe slots. There's a PCIe 4x16 for the graphics card, so that's taken up. And the only other one is a PCIe 3 by one It's a single lane PCIe th slot. So I have no idea what you're going to use that for. Um, but that was the only PCIe expansion slot available. The other weird thing, there was spots on the motherboard for four SATA connectors, but only two of them had the plastic connector actually soldered to the board. The other, so there was two plastic connectors here, and you could see the two locations on the motherboard where two more connectors could go, but the connectors were never just put on. So I think that was just an example of weird penny pinching, um, that they didn't want to put those extra two connectors on. So that was weird. Um, the case also only had a 500 watt power supply, which I found surprising because even NVIDIA for the RTX 3070, they recommend a 650 watt power supply. Now, I know those recommendations are always well over and above what you actually need. But when you think about it, a Ryzen 5 5600G plus 16 gigs of RAM plus a one terabyte physical spinning hard drive plus an RTX 3070. Running all that off a 500 watt power supply, you're really close to the line. Um, you're going to be using up most of that power supply's capacity, and there's certainly no room for growth or expansion down the road. So that, again, kind of really penny-pinching on the power supply, giving you the bare minimum wattage to run that computer, uh, as far as I can tell. Now, here's the weirdest part. The weirdest part is with the CPU that they decided to use. So like I said, it was a Ryzen 5 5600G. The G in that CPU means it's got integrated graphics. But if we go to the HP website, we'll see that HANA motherboard doesn't have the capacity to have integrated graphics. And it's really brought out by the fact when you look on the back on the I.O. panel, where all your you know, inputs and outputs are, there's no video out. There's no VGA. There's no HDMI. There's no DisplayPort. Nothing. They're all just missing. So there is no way that you could make use of the integrated graphics in that 5600G. So here's the question. Um, why did they use a 5600G? <laughs> because you could have used a 5600X and it would have cost less. It would have been a faster CPU and it has double the level three cache. So why would you pay more for less clash on a slower CPU for integrated graphics that you can't possibly use? Uh, it's a really weird choice to make. And anybody building their own PC or any reasonably qualified PC assembler would never make a choice like that. So here's what I think happened. I think HP wanted to build a bunch of gaming PCs and they say, hey, look, we got all these extra 5600G chips kicking around. We'll just toss them into these machines with an RTX 3070 and nobody will ever know the difference. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not that it doesn't work. It's just that for the money that's spent, it's really suboptimal. And let's face it, whatever HP is spending on those CPUs, it does roll through to the consumer, right? It's not just like CPU, uh, 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 HP absorbs the extra cost of that integrated graphics on that CPU. So it's just a really weird choice to make. So when you look at this pre-built PC, or when I was looking at this pre-built PC, it was a little bit surprised because when you add it all up, there was completely inefficient cooling for the design and construction of that computer. There was a really weird choice made in, in the CPU. The motherboard was stripped of any kind of expansion ability or expandability given the limited number of slots that it has. The power supply was, was inadequate for the computer, and yet it cost way more than it would if you assembled it yourself. And, and here's my thing. So I added up all the parts on this thing, and right now I could build uh, the same computer, a similar one, for about 1400 Canadian. So this PC, I think, costs about 1700 because that's kind of what they seem to be for a very similar model on Best Buy right now. So you're saying, well, 300 bucks isn't bad, and I agree. I think where a pre-built PC really fits in is for people that don't want to spend the time or the effort to put one together themselves. And paying $300 extra to have somebody do it for you is probably a reasonable deal. That's totally fair. So I got no headache with that. 
And if this were an office PC we're talking about, where it was being used for spreadsheets and, and Outlook and Word and all that kind of stuff, it, it wouldn't matter because any computer can do that kind of stuff. You don't need a computer that's really thoughtfully put together. But if you're a content creator or you're a gamer and you're going to be pushing that PC, in some cases, to the very limits of its abilities, the thoughtfulness in the way a computer's put together really makes a difference. If I had built, if I had bought my own parts at $1,400 and put the computer together, it's not the $300 difference that irritates me so much on this. It's that that computer would have proper cooling. It'd have a good quality CPU cooler. It would have a more logical CPU in it. It would have a motherboard that's got expanded connectivity. It would have a power supply that better met the needs of the computer and enabled you to upgrade in the future. And it would have a big NVMe, a one or two terabyte, to hold the OS as well as your games and as well as your data so that your games and data aren't on this old, slow, hard disk drive. So paying somebody to put a PC together for you makes sense if that's what you want to do and you don't want to have to learn how to do it or you want to put in the time and energy. But if you're doing that, you should at least get a computer that's as good as what you can put together on your own. And looking at this HP Omen of my buddies, I mean, it's not even close. Um, now, I understand for him, like, he's not a huge computer guy. You know, and, and for him, the only real inconvenience has been that he has to run the computer with the sides off. Um, which, you know, let's face it, it, it's not position A. It's not the end of the world, but it's not something you really want to do. And so for him, the, the computer works fine. Uh, and, and I kind of get that. But if you're fussy about your computer, if you're fussy about the way it works, if you want to maximize its ability to do content creation, gaming, etc., you really have to be careful when buying a pre-built. Because what I've kind of picked up, and I'm not the only one that's noticed this, if you go over to uh, the Gamers Nexus YouTube channel, look what Steve has done. If you search uh, pre-built PC on his channel, you'll see he's tested a bunch of pre-builds, and he finds the same thing. A lot of them are very poorly put together. And the ones that aren't often cost way more. They're quite expensive. So at the end of the day, if you are really picky about how your PC is going to perform, you've got two options. You can build one yourself, or... You can go to your local computer dealer. Now, they're, they're still, I know they're harder to find down than they used to be, but every town has got guys that run a store where they have computer parts, computer repairs, all that kind of stuff. You offer them a few hundred bucks and they'll put a custom PC together for you um, with parts that will make a lot more sense than what a mass manufacturer will do. And the reason a mass manufacturer does this is because they're often combining parts that they have sticking around or kicking around. I have no doubt that the reason this 5600G CPU was on that motherboard is because that's what HP had on hand. They probably had tons of them and just had to blow them out. Um, also, when companies are, are doing pre-built PCs, they're cranking out thousands of these things. And if they can save a dollar or two here, a dollar or two there, that really adds up. So they are going to tend to cut corners everywhere. That's why you don't see the normal number of PCIe slots. You don't see the normal number of SATA slots. You see a lot of things that have kind of been left aside. And it's because by not adding them onto the motherboard or not adding them into the PC like extra cooling fans, they save a lot of money over all those units that they're kicking out. So my advice there, build your own, get one custom built by a local assembler, or at the very minimum, if you're going to buy a pre-built, you should do enough research to understand what does a proper cooling solution look like? What is a reasonable CPU to have with what graphics card? What amount of memory makes sense? Make sure that when you, you look at a pre-built PC, you're looking at something that's going to make sense for you, it's going to work well, and you're not going to regret it down the road. Now, you could say to me, sure, Graham, but your, your buddy, he could take that computer and he could upgrade it, right? He could buy a new case, he could buy more case fans, he could get that NVMe drive, he could buy a new PSU. But again, by the time you've done all that, you've spent another whole bunch of money to end up with a computer that you could have had if you built your own for a whole lot less. So I'll admit to you, I did think a few years ago that the days of building your own PC were going to go by the wayside because you had all these big manufacturers getting into the gaming PC space. They were building gaming PCs, and I thought, you know, mass manufacturing, it'll be way cheaper, way more efficient, etc. But now that I've kind of seen what they look like, I kind of get why we still build our own.
um, because in so many ways they're they're kind of lacking and they're not the best value and and you can spend less money and get more computer by doing it on your own or having your local guy build one for you so I hope you find that helpful. It's just my little glimpse in, into one single modern gaming PC by a major manufacturer. I know it's not every gaming PC, but I think there's enough of them that are assembled like this that it, it's just worth a warning that you don't always get what you pay for when you buy pre-built. I hope you found that helpful. If so, do me a big favor and hit that like button down below because it does help me out. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to see you again on the next video. I'm Graham Hughes. I look forward to seeing you next time.